we opened the restaurant in 1992, before the craft cocktail movement really had uh, taken off, we um, met a guy named Dale DeGroff, who has become a dear friend. He is responsible more than anybody else for the birth of the American cocktail from the Rainbow Room in New York, where he started it, the, the rebirth of the American craft cocktail movement. We were early adopters, so in the spring of 1993, we had a craft cocktail program, fresh juices, making sours with egg whites, using fresh fruits, and making historical cocktails. So we were one of the first craft cocktail bars of the modern era in the world, certainly the first in New Jersey. Uh, I like to say it was, we, we did it about 10 years before anybody gave a damn. Um, so we're all about craft cocktails, and now it's an integral part of dining, but we were the first, and I think we're still among the best. But it's it's just a it's a great part. It's a part of dining. It's part of what we do. Several years ago, uh, a, a city that we have a lot in common with is the city of Belfast in Ireland. Um, Belfast, like New Brunswick, is a city that's going through a, a redevelopment and. Uh, highly leveraging arts and culture in the university to rebuild their city and restaurants are an integral part of that. Well, the Lord Mayor of Belfast came over on an official visit to visit with us, which led to him inviting uh, our mayor, Jim Cahill, over to, to bring the first incoming trade delegation to Belfast in 20 years, which we did, which was fantastic. And when we went there, they served this cocktail because we invented it when the Lord Mayor came here, had a lunch with our mayor here, and we wanted to invent something that was related to Ireland, but we didn't necessarily want to use Irish whiskey. If you go to Ireland or you're at a real Irish bar in America, at the end of the night, kind of an old guy's drink, and I can say that now because I'm an old guy, is uh, brandy and port. And you'd finish the night with a brandy and port. And what that is, is it's usually a cognac with just a little drop of port in it to take the edge off. And it's, it's fairly delicious. And if you're in a, in a bar in America that's not really an Irish bar, it's just painted green with a shamrock on it, and you ask for a, a, a brandy and port, they won't know what you're talking about. Uh, so it's a good litmus test for whether you're at a, at a real Irish bar or not. So I decided for the Lord Mayor's visit, we would make a Belfast cocktail that had uh, the brandy and port at its base. And so if you'd like, I'll make you one now if you don't mind, right? So. Um, it's a it, you know brandy and port. It's usually when you have it in Ireland, um, it's uh, it's um, mostly brandy with just a drop of port. This is equal parts port and brandy, so it's an ounce and a half each of port and brandy, right? Here we are, and then. To just give it a little bit of spice, it's almost like a mulled wine. We throw in uh, a half an ounce of cinnamon syrup, right? And then we use this, which is Pear Williams. Pear Williams is a, a brandy actually made from pears, uh, scented, not wood aged at all, and it really brightens up the cocktail. Port can be a little bit cloying in a cocktail. Now this is a stirred cocktail. Um, the rule of thumb the classic rule of thumb with cocktails is um, if it's all liquor, it's a stirred cocktail. If it has fruit juice in it, then it's usually a shaken cocktail. Um, so that's why martinis, Manhattans, Brooklyn cocktails are usually stirred in this one as well. You want to stir it enough that it really gets cold. Uh, and also you want to get a little bit of melt from the ice in here as well. That's what makes it cold and also gets the proportions just right. So we're not trying to get any shards of ice, any shaved ice in there. We just want a nice cold drink. And you see the outside of the glass is starting to frost, and so we know we're there, right? Okay, so now we have our Hawthorne strainer, and into a beautiful cocktail glass for a drink, like thus and so, right to the line. It has a couple of different garnishes. Um, first thing is we use a little dash of bitters. This is Del de Groff bitters. You can also use regular Angostura bitters. This is uh, Regan orange bitters. Gary Regan is also a friend, and that's a lovely orange bitter. Um, the orange bitters is negligible. If you don't have it, you don't really need to do it. And then I like to put a little bit of cinnamon on top. There's a cinnamon syrup in there, but that gives it a little more cinnamon nose. You can garnish for the festive uh, cinnamon stick. And then, of course, just an orange twist. Put it on top just like that, get the oil off from the skin, and you can garnish with the orange twist as well. And there you have a Belfast cocktail.